In this video, we're going to install WordPress using one of the many what's called one-click installation methods. Now, while there is a few more than just one click involved, you will see just how easy this method is in just a second. Now, before we get started in the WordPress creation process, I'd suggest that we first get our ducks in a row by creating a desktop folder to keep all the files dealing with our new WordPress site in. Files like our login details, uh, images, future content, and whatever else you can think of that will have anything to do with this site can go into this particular folder. The alternative is that six months or a year from now, you're going to spend several minutes or hours looking for your login credentials or those expensive header images you bought for this site or your backup files, and you're going to hear my voice whispering in the background, I told you so. So avoid the headaches and the hassles. Just spend a few minutes now, create that desktop folder, and you'll be in good shape down the line when you really need it. This so-called one-click method requires that you have access to one of a few different applications that create programs like WordPress on your server in as little as one click of your mouse button. Now the one I'm going to be using in this demo is called Softaculous, but all of these applications work pretty much the same way. So once you've logged into your cPanel control panel, go ahead and scroll on down until you come to the module that says Software and Services, and in here is where you're going to find one of those little icons for that particular application. And again, in this case, it's Softaculous. Go ahead and click on that icon. That'll open up the application page and you just select WordPress. And up on the top here gives you the various tabs to learn more about the program WordPress. But we're going to go ahead and just click on install to keep the video moving along. And I'm going to install it on the HTTP protocol because I do not have an SSL certificate attached to my domain. And if I have multiple domains in this cPanel, hit the drop down arrow here to select the one you want to install WordPress on. And if you want to install WordPress on a subdirectory of that domain, then just type the name in here. Make sure that that directory does not currently exist because this application will create it for you. But I'm going to install WordPress on the root directory. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to leave the database table prefix just the way that it is by default and under the site settings I'm going to leave these as they are by default as well. I'll show you here before the end of the video on where inside of the administration section of the installed WordPress program you'll be able to change these later on. Now this is probably the most important section of the entire installation process and that's where you assign yourself an admin username, admin password, and an admin email address. The email address is populated by default with admin and your domain name. I would suggest you create an email address if this isn't one that's already in existence that you either create one that is like this or replace this with one that is active that you have access to on a regular basis. But the main thing you want to take away from this is do not use admin as your username. Make it pretty difficult to guess and the password you've got the key off to the right here that will create a password for you that's somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 out of 100, which is doable, but if you want to get closer to 100 out of 100, just add additional characters. They can be upper or lowercase letters, they can be numbers, or even special characters. And be sure to copy this information and paste it onto a document somewhere in your organizational files because you will need this at some point in the near future. And let's come on down and select the language. I'm going to leave mine at English. And under Select Plugins, I'm going to go ahead and check that box to install Limit Login Attempts. This is a great plugin. Unfortunately, it has not been updated for a couple of years, but it's still a great plugin. It works. It does what it's supposed to do. And that is, just as the name implies, it limits login attempts. If somebody's going to sit there and try to continue to guess your username and your password, then they're going to be locked out. Now, there are other plugins that will do this as well, so you're not limited to just this particular plugin for that action. But I'm going to go ahead and install it anyway. You can always go back and uninstall it later on and replace it with a different plugin. Under Advanced Options, you can learn more about each one of these items by just hovering over the I at the end. But I'm going to leave all of these alone. Even the backup, I'm going to leave that as Don't Backup because I'll be using a third-party plugin to do the backups for me. If you're not going to be using a third-party plugin, you should definitely have a backup going on. 
And to use this one, you just select whichever one you want, whether it's once a day or once a week, depending upon the amount of content you're regularly adding, it would depend on which option you go with here. And then choose the amount of backups you want to store on your server. You should never go with unlimited, but four is a pretty good number to go with. But again, I'm going to go with don't backup. And you can choose a theme if you want to go ahead and install one from this application. But for the time being, I'm going to leave this alone. And here's the one click part of this entire installation process. After you've got things set up the way you like, click on that button once and it's installing WordPress for you. And we're good. Click on this link here to actually see the site. That's the current theme that it's on. And I believe that's the default 2015 theme. And if you want to log into the back end area, click on this link and have your username and password handy. And you'll only get this warning popping up if you elected to install that plugin limit login attempts. So at this point, we want to go ahead and put in our username and password and then click on login. And this is the dashboard area. And if you come over here to settings, general, this is where you can change the site title and tagline. And under appearance, themes, it's where you would go in and add additional themes and change the current theme to whatever you would want. And that's it. That's going to bring us to the end of this video on using one of the one-click installation applications to install WordPress on your server. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. In this video, we're going to install WordPress manually, which does take a little bit longer than the so-called instant methods, but there are more security measures built into this method and this way you're always going to be installing the most recent version of WordPress. But first, to keep things organized, go ahead and create a folder on your desktop relating to this WordPress site, name it whatever you want. Inside this folder, you should keep things like your images, your text or spreadsheet documents that contain the login credentials, your backups, anything related to this particular WordPress site, you should have one place on your computer to go to to find all those goodies. Okay, that's out of the way. Now, there's basically four things we're going to do to create our WordPress site. We're going to go to WordPress.org and download the most recent installation files. Then number two, we're going to unzip those files and upload them to our server. Now at this point, I need to assume that you've already got a domain name and a web hosting service. And you should also determine at this point, are you going to be uploading or installing WordPress on your root directory or on a subdirectory? Meaning, whenever you type in the URL to your WordPress site, is it going to be mydomain.com? Boom, there's your WordPress site. Or is it going to be in a subdirectory where you type in mydomain.com slash blog? Either way you want to do it is totally fine because the installation process is exactly the same. It's just where are you going to upload these files to? Number three, we're going to build a database. And number four, we're going to add our database to our WordPress site. And that's basically it. So let's go and get to work. Now I've already taken the liberty of going to WordPress.org and downloading the most recent installation files. And I want to point out that in a zipped up format, it's just a little bit over six megabytes. But whenever we uncompress those, as you can see, as I hover over this, it's almost 17 megabytes. And most every installation process recommends that you upload these files here. So I open that up. And this will take twice as long than if you were to upload a single zip file. But if you're going to do that fast way, as I'm about to show you, you have to send the right zip file. So you cannot send the zip file that you downloaded from WordPress.org. That's not going to work. So first, unzip them. And I do that in my Windows machine by right-clicking and then left-clicking on Extract All. Navigate to the location on my computer where I want those files to be extracted to. Click on Extract and we're good. And then you come up with something like this. Then open that folder and expose all the files. Then select the top file or folder in this case. Hold the shift key down on your keyboard, select the bottom file, and that selects all the files. And then just pick one of these files in here, it does not matter, and then right click and then compress, or in my case, send to compressed folder. It'll zip all these guys up into the one file right here, and that's what I'm going to upload to my server. But first I want to point out that if you click on this readme file, it opens up in your browser, and this gives you some more installation tips, updating tips, and so on. So when you get a chance, check that out. Now we head over to our file manager in our cPanel control panel and upload that zip file. Click on upload, 
click on choose file navigate to the location of that zip file we just created select that click on open and it's going to begin the upload process and while it's doing that I'm going to come on back over here to cPanel and create our database so scroll on down to get to the databases panel click on MySQL databases and if I'm going too fast for you well that's what the pause buttons for now we want to create our database here create a user here and then tie the two together down here and I'll get to that here in just a second but first let's create our database now you can put whatever you want in here and if you make a mistake don't worry because they will tell you in big red letters click on create database copy this but whenever you do this make sure you do not copy that period at the end because that's not part of the name I'm gonna go ahead and paste this on a document that I got stashed away here it's gonna hold the database name the database username the database password and a new database prefix but I'm getting ahead of myself here let's go ahead and paste this right here it'll all make sense here in a second oh and by the way this stuff here these are the username and the password for my WordPress administrator area again I'll get to that here in just a second so click on go back come on down and create our user and I'm going to use the same name for my username as I did for the database name so I just want to copy this guy right here now you don't have to you can name your username whatever you want but this is just a habit I've gotten into now we want to create a strong password and I do that by using the password generator copy this check that box saying that you did copy that click on use password click on create user and I'm going to paste that password right here and remember my database name and username are exactly the same so we're good there click on go back now we need to tie the two together if you've got multiple databases and multiple users make sure that you select the proper ones from this drop down arrow click on add click on all privileges click on make changes click on go back and our database is all complete now we come on back up here make sure our upload is finished it is click on back to home select that file that we just uploaded come on up here and click on extract click on extract files click on close select that zip file again because we no longer need it let's go ahead and delete it click on delete files we are good to go now we've got all the pieces of the puzzle put together we just need to tie them all up and we're going to do that by putting our install URL in a new tab here so let's paste that right in here and that install URL is wherever you have your WordPress site installed and in my example I'm installing it on the root directory if you had it in a subdirectory then it would be your domain name slash the name of your subdirectory like blog or members or whatever slash WP admin slash install.php then hit enter then you select the language you want your WordPress site to be in then click on continue tells you some information you're, you're going to need here to tie your database into your WordPress installation this is the stuff we just gathered a second ago when we created our database so have that ready then click on let's go enter that information in here and more times than not the database host will be localhost if you're not sure contact your hosting service or you can just leave it alone and give it a try and if it gives you an error message then you'll know to contact your hosting service and as far as the table prefix for your database like it says here if you're going to be running multiple WordPress installations on the single database you want to change this and this can be a security issue as well since most hackers know that the table prefix is WP underscore by default it might give them a leg up on being able to break into your site so another reason to change that up but for the sake of this video it being a demo and all I'm just gonna leave this alone and then once you get the information filled in here that you had copied under your text document earlier when you created your database click on submit then you'll get this pop-up telling you to run the install then this comes up telling you to put in your site title which you can do later but at the very least you're going to need to create a username that's not easily guessed and usually the password that's here by default is good and strong as it says or you can change this in either case you want to copy the username and the password because you're going to need that here in just a second to log in the email address you want to make sure this is an active email address that you have access to and on privacy I always uncheck this just personal preference 
That way, the search engines will usually not index my site until I'm ready for them to. In other words, after I've got content in there, I've got all the things set up the way that I want it to be set up. Then once you get all the blanks filled in and your username and your password copied, click on Install WordPress and you get the success message. Yay! Now I'm going to click on Login and enter the username and the password that you just copied to your text document. Then click on Login. And this is our dashboard area for the admin area. Now then we come on down here to Settings. Now basically we're done at this point, but if we come on down here to Settings and go to Reading, right here is that box that you want to untick whenever you're ready to have the search engines come and index your site. Because whenever I unticked that box on the install process, it automatically checked this box. Because this says discourage search engines, so if you want to discourage them, make sure that box is checked. But whenever you want to encourage the search engines, come on back in here and uncheck that box, click on save changes, and you're ready to rock and roll. And that is how you can manually create a WordPress site. Thanks for watching, and you have a great day. This video will cover the basic after installation cleanup. Now, most all of the actions in this video are optional. I do, however, feel that they are important enough to at least let you know of them so you can then decide if you want to spend the extra few minutes to do them or not. The first thing that I do is to log into my cPanel control panel and then go over to the file manager and access the root directory of my WordPress installation. So if you had installed WordPress on, say, a subdirectory like blog or members, then you would want to navigate to where you see these files here. But in my demonstration, it's in the root directory. So first thing is, depending upon the installation method you used, if you still have the wp-config-sample.php file, go ahead and select that. And there's a couple other ones in here too. Hold the control key down on your keyboard if you're on a PC and select the readme.html and the license.txt. These are just files you don't need. And then click on delete, confirm that. And then under wp-admin, open that up by double clicking. And there's a couple of installation files in here you don't need because, well, it's already installed. And that's install-helper.php and install.php. So select one of those, hold the control key down and select the other one, and then delete. Confirm deletion. And that's all from the file manager that we're going to mess with. So we can go ahead and close this out. And now let's go ahead and log into the dashboard area of our WordPress site. And if you've not done that before, then enter the URL to your WordPress site slash wp-admin hit enter and you'll be presented with a box for you to add your username and your password and then just log in. That'll bring you to this page which is the dashboard page and we'll just kind of start at the top. Now the first item I'm going to suggest getting rid of is the sample post and the sample comment that's attached to that post. But if you want to keep this placeholder to kind of give you an, a, a visual guide as to how they look, for example this is that first post right here. And if you want to keep that, then by all means do so. I'm going to go ahead and trash it. And it's still available in the trash heap. In case you want to bring that back, you can do so. But by trashing that, we also trash the comment that was assigned to that. Next up is pages. We've got a sample page for our placeholder. And like with post, if you want to keep this to kind of get a visual as to how it's going to look, then go ahead and hang on to it. But I'm going to go ahead and trash that. And like with post, it's still in the trash bin. So if you want to bring that back out live later, then go ahead and do so. Unless, of course, you empty the trash bin. Then it's going to be gone for good. Now, a couple of other items that you might want to consider deleting, and that would be under the appearance themes and under plugins. Because by default, there's a few different themes that are installed on your WordPress site. Depending upon the version that you've installed, it could be 2014, 2015, 2016, or even 2013 down here. You really only need one theme installed at a time. I know people that have 10 or 11 different themes installed, but you're only using one at a time. So in most cases, there's no reason to keep multiple themes installed. It takes a matter of a minute or two to install a brand new theme. So why have the extra baggage if you don't need it, right? But that's just my thinking. So if you want to delete these additional themes, just select it, come on down here in the lower right and click on delete. Select it, come on down to the lower right, click on delete, confirm deletion, and select it. Come on down to the right and click on delete, and then confirm that by clicking on OK. And now we've got just the one theme. Likewise with plugins, if we go to plugins, click on that, 
And these are the two plugins that come installed by default. I usually just go ahead and delete the Hello Dolly plugin, and you can do that by just clicking on the delete link here. I usually keep and activate the Akismet plugin, unless I have a different plugin that will do pretty much the same thing, then I'll delete both of these. So you can either delete them individually by using the links, or you can select multiple plugins and use the bulk action option up here. But I'm just going to go ahead and select the Hello Dolly, delete that, and then confirm the deletion, and that's it. Now while there might be more you can do to clean things up, this is what I do with every new install, and if I wasn't talking at the same time, I could have done this in less than a minute. So it's worth it to me. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video on after installation cleanup of my WordPress site. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. This video is going to cover some basic security measures that you can put in place for your WordPress site. Now the four items we're going to be covering in this video is number one, we're going to replace the default ID number one with the newly created admin user account. And I'll show you that here in just a second. Number two, we're gonna keep everything up to date. And I'll cover that in more detail here just as soon as we get done creating that new admin user account. And number three, if using older versions of WordPress for some odd reason, then I'm gonna show you how you can hide the version number of that older version of WordPress you're using from potential hackers. And number four, doing regular backups of both your files and your database is a good thing and I'll show you how you can tackle that pretty easily. So first off, replacing the default ID number one. What the heck am I talking about? Well, whenever you first install WordPress, it asks you to create a admin user account and a password. Well, that admin user account is assigned to the very first slot in the database, and that's ID number one. Logging into my cPanel control panel, let me show you what I'm talking about. Scroll on down to databases and click on PHP My Admin. And this is going to show you all the different databases that you have assigned to that one domain. And this is the one for the demo site that we're working on. And you can see right here at WP Users, we go ahead and open this up. It's going to give a list of all the users on that database. And right now there's just the one, but the ID number one is right here and it's assigned to the administrator and that is a potential security issue so we're going to get around that by simply creating another account inside of our wordpress dashboard by coming over to users add new enter a new username email address first name last name website if you want password and then under role hit the drop down administrator and that will assign this particular user to the next available slot and of course in this case there's only one, so the next available slot will be ID number two. Then we'll come back in and delete ID number one. And we'll do that by logging out as our ID number one administrator user, logging in as the new administrator, and then deleting the old original administrator account that was assigned to ID number one. Pretty simple stuff, and it's so simple that this is a potential security hole that's easily plugged. So by all means, take a few minutes and take care of that. Now number two, keeping everything up to date. Now what I'm referring to here is keeping your plugins up to date when a new version of a particular plugin that you have installed comes out, update it. Likewise with themes and with the core WordPress files. Now the one thing about the themes and the plugins, those need to be updated immediately as soon as the new versions come out. As far as the core WordPress files, I'm in the camp that you should wait at least seven days before updating to a new version. But if it's listed as a security update, then go ahead and update that immediately. Otherwise, on new versions of WordPress, sometimes there's some lingering compatibility issues between the new version of WordPress and some plugins or themes. So let somebody else find out about those on their site, and that can take about three to five days. So again, new versions, wait a few days, Security updates, update immediately. Other than that though, update your plugins and your themes immediately. And number three, if using an older version of WordPress, you want to hide the version number from the potential hackers because older versions of WordPress are known to have security issues. And that's why hackers love people that don't update their WordPress sites. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, I'm in the Chrome browser, so if you're in a different browser, this might look a little different to you. But uh, just right-click and go to View Page Source. And you can see here the version 4.3.1. What we want to do now is we want to be able to hide the version. Because if this says 3.2, then the hackers, doing just what I just did, 
will be able to gain access based on whatever security hole there was in that older version. So we want to be able to hide these version numbers. And there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can fiddle with the code that would require us to create a child theme and other time consuming actions, or we can simply install and activate a plugin in a matter of seconds. Here, let me show you. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. Come on back into our dashboard area. Come on over to plugins, go to add new, and up here in the search plugins box, type in meta generator and version info remover. That's a mouthful. Then hit enter, and it should be one of the first ones that pops up right here meta generator and version info remover. Go ahead and click on install now, activate. And it does have an additional item that pops into the settings here. But if we click on that to go look at it, you can see by default, everything that we need is already done. But if for some reason there's something that you want to exclude from this, then you can enter those URLs right here. Let's come on back here to our home page and refresh. Right click, view page source, and you can see those version numbers have been eliminated. And lastly, number four, doing regular backups of both files and database. Now, what do I mean by regular? Well, that depends on your own situation. If you are regularly adding new content daily, then you might want to consider doing a daily backup. If you're only adding new content once a week or once a month, then do your backups accordingly. This can be done a couple of ways. An easy way is by automating this with the plugin. Come on over here to our dashboard area again. Come on back to plugins and go to add new. And there's quite a few plugins and third party tools that can do backups for you. But again, we're talking about both database and files. Do a search for Updraft. Full name is Updraft Plus, but yeah, that's right here. Updraft Plus Backup and Restoration. And as you can see by this brief description here, it's a complete backup. And you can do it manually or schedule it. The backups can be sent to Dropbox, Amazon S3, Google Drive, FTP, and it's fairly popular too. Go ahead and click on Install Now, Activate, and then come on down to Settings, and then click on Updraft Plus Backups. And between the updraftplus.com site and their FAQs, you've got plenty of information here on how to set this up and to put this to use for both manual and automating the backup process. Now, there are many more security measures that you can put into place to help keep the bad people out. But for now, the items covered in this video will help keep your site safer than the sites that do not have these basics in place. That's going to bring us to the end of this video on basic WordPress security. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. This video is going to walk you through a tour of your WordPress dashboard. Now the WordPress dashboard is the central location of all the content management features in your WordPress site. You get there by typing into your browser's address bar up here the URL to your WordPress site forward slash WP admin. Then go ahead and hit enter on your keyboard and then you're going to be prompted to add your username and password in a little box that pops up here in the center. Then whenever you do that you're going to be brought to a page that looks similar to this. Now along the top here is your admin bar and it has several different links to various parts of your WordPress site. Over on the far left you've got this icon here for WordPress and if you hover over that you get this little drop down menu. Next to that is the title of your WordPress site and a little house looking thing. If you click on that or this link here it says visit site that's going to take you to your main page of your WordPress site. Then next to that you can access comments then next to the comments link, moving to the right, you have the new link where you can add a new post, new media, that's like videos and images and such, new page, and new users. These can also be accessed over here in the far left column, otherwise known as your main menu. But getting back up here to the far right on your admin bar, you have your name or whatever name you're logged in as, and to the right of that is your gravatar or the image that represents this name that you're logged in under. And in this little drop down box here, you've got a few features. Whenever you hover over your name, that'll take you to your profile page. Likewise with this guy here that says edit my profile. Just click on that. It'll take you to the same page. And then here we'll log you out. Now here in the middle, we've got the various modules that can be moved around or even removed by clicking on the screen options tab up here at the top right. And by removing the check mark in these boxes, we'll remove these various modules. For example, at a glance, this guy right here, untick that, poof, it's gone. WordPress news, you don't want to know about the news, uncheck that, poof, it's gone. And likewise, you just add the check back into the boxes and they will reappear, just like so. And if we go ahead and click off of the screen options tab, you have the help option over here. 
and this is page specific. So you can click on this and this gives you specific information related to the dashboard area. You also have this help tab up here in the top right on these other items here that are specific to that particular item. For example, if we go to the post page, come on up here to the help tab, these items here are going to be more related to the post section when it comes to helping answer any questions. Whatever you see on this help page here might be different than what you might see on, say, the appearance page help section. This is more related to the themes. So now if we take a closer look to the main menu over here on the left, you see the various titles here and the little flyout menu whenever you hover over these items. Being brand new to these, they might not mean a whole lot to you, but you'll get accustomed to them over time. Post, just like it sounds, that's where you add a new post. Now whenever you click on this link here, the flyout menu pops down below that item. And you can still access each and every one of those links just by clicking on them. And then moving on down, we've got media. That's where you can add things like images or video or audio files, pages, comments, and appearance. That's pretty important because that's where you can add and customize the various looks or themes of your WordPress site. Along with that, you have access to various widgets, menus, header, background, and editor. Plugins adds a ton of additional functionality to your WordPress site. Users, that's where you can go in and add additional users or access current users or even access and edit your own profile. Tools and under settings, a lot of cool stuff in here, but that's the makings of a different video altogether. Now, I also want to mention that you can collapse this menu to where it's just showing those icons that were to the left of the menu items. So if you want more real estate here in the center, go ahead and collapse that. Otherwise, just click on what looks like a little video play button there and it will expand that back out to full size. And that's a tour of your WordPress dashboard. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. This video will explain the difference between a WordPress post and a WordPress page. Now, of the two, the post is by far the most important. Now, let's back up to the beginning. The post has been around since WordPress first began and the page was not introduced until version 1.5 back in 2005. You see, with version 1.5 onward, you could now create static pages like your contact page or your about page that are not part of any blog post. And here's a couple other differences between the two. Pages are a one-off content holder and posts are a series of content within a WordPress site that can be related to one another or not, but are by default shown in reverse chronological order, meaning the most recent post is at the top and the older posts are below that. And pages can be parents or children of one another, but posts cannot. Posts, however, have tags and categories, but pages do not. And by default, you can use custom page templates, but you can't with posts. Posts have different post types, static, video, audio, depending upon the theme that you're using, and pages do not. And you can create as many different pages as you want, just like posts, and posts show up in your RSS feeds, but pages do not. And that's gonna bring us to the end of this video on the differences between your WordPress posts and your WordPress page. Thanks for watching, and you have a great day. In this video, we're gonna cover the WordPress page and how to create one. And to do that, we need to first log into our dashboard area, and I've already done that here. And if you've not done that before, then in the browser's address bar up here, you want to put in the URL to your WordPress site, followed by a forward slash wp-admin, hit enter, and then a box is going to pop up prompting you to enter your username and your password, and do that, you'll then be brought to this page. At this point, you want to come on over here to the left and click on pages, and that'll bring you to the page that contains a list of all of your pages that have been published, scheduled to be published, or are in draft mode and you'll see that over here in the far right and the date will be listed right above that and you can get to the page editor of that particular page by clicking on the title or when you hover over this section here these options will be displayed and you can click on edit to get to the full editor or if there's just a couple of minor items then you can click on the quick edit and you'll be presented with this option here to make just a few of the minor edits but not the full page edit or you can trash it or you can view it in your browser and to create a new page you can do that a couple of different ways by coming over here to the far left and clicking on add new under the pages section or on the pages page you can come up here and click on add new or in the admin toolbar 
you can hover over the word new and you'll get this drop down and you can click on page. That'll bring you to the page editor where you can enter the title and the content of that new page. And as soon as you enter the title up here in the title bar and click outside of that, WordPress will assign it the slug or the URL to that page. And if you decide later on that you want to edit the slug, maybe make it smaller or change it all together, you can do that by clicking on edit, make the change, click on OK, and then if you've already published this page, you'll have to come over here to the right and click on the update button. Because this button over here will reflect if it needs to be published or if it needs to be updated or if it's going to be scheduled for a later publication. And I'll cover that here in just a second. But getting back to the editor box, you've got these formatting options here that are very similar to the formatting options of most any other document processing program like Microsoft Word or OpenOffice. And if you are presented with only the single row of formatting options, then you can click on the toolbar toggle option here on the end and that will display the remaining row or rows of formatting tools. And then you just enter your content here and you can do that a couple of ways just by typing away in either the visual tab which is kind of like a WYSIWYG or what you see is what you get format or you can enter it in the text tab and you have less formatting tools to work with but you can still do the same thing if you're familiar with writing out the code longhand. But coming back to the visual tab if you have content already produced elsewhere that you want to copy and paste into the editor window and that content is already formatted, maybe you've got some clickable links or you've got some text that's bold or italicized like I have in this example here. This is a clickable link. This text is bolded and this text is italicized and this is a Word document. And if you wanted to copy and paste something like this and maintain that formatting, then you want to make sure that this text icon does not have a border around it. Let me demonstrate. I'm going to go ahead and paste that content in here by holding the control key down on my keyboard and hitting the letter V as in Victor. And you can see that it's maintained that formatting. Now it did not carry over the text color and that might just be a theme issue, but it did carry over the formatting for the clickable link. Let me show you in the text tab. You can see here where it's got the ahref tag. Now, if you did not want to carry over the formatting, if you wanted to get that stripped out, let's go ahead and select this and delete it. Then you would click on this text icon. You'll get this pop-up telling you what you're about to do and how to toggle this on and off. And basically, this is just going to strip out the formatting from that Word document. And you can see now that it has a border around that icon. If I control V to paste that, all the formatting is stripped out. Now, if you wanted to add media to this, like an image or a video or anything from the media library, then you can do that by clicking on the Add Media button right here. Just put the cursor somewhere in the editor window where you want that media to be added and come on up here and click on Add Media. And you can just drag and drop that media file in here or you can select from content that's already been added to your media library or you can insert it from a URL. Let's say we want to add the working squirrel here. Just select that, click on insert into page, and there it is. And you can click on the image for further formatting. Now up along the top here in the far right, you have this help tab. It has a drop down with help information related to this particular page, the page editor page. And under screen options, if we click on that, we get this drop down where we can add additional fields or options on our page. For example, if we check the box here next to discussion that adds the discussion module down here below the editor window where we can toggle on or off to allow comments and or trackbacks and pingbacks and one other item up here I wanted to mention besides the number of columns you can have either one or the default two is this check box here by default it enables full height editor in other words, there's no scroll bar here in the editor window. And if we scroll down, you can see the formatting tools stick. But if we untick this box, then the editor window has a predefined height. And anything beyond that height adds a scroll bar to the editor window. And everything else on this page scrolls up to the top. But that's part of the distraction-free functionality. Another element of the distraction-free functionality of the editor page is this button right here in the top right corner under the text tab. If we click on that, the elements on both sides of the editor window, the sidebars, they're going to disappear like they just did. And if you want them back temporarily, 
just move your cursor outside of the editor window and there they are. And if you want them to go away again with that button on, then just put the cursor somewhere in the editor window and hit enter and there they go. And that's more of the distraction free editing. Let's go ahead and turn that off and close up the screen options tab. And over here on the right, you have these different modules, the top one being publish with different elements there where you can publish it immediately. Or if we click on edit, you can see where you can schedule this later. And if we change that to a later date and hit OK, you can see that publish button changes to schedule. You can also save it as a draft if you want to just come back later and work on this to finish it up. And under visibility, by default, once it's published, it's going to be visible to everybody. You can change that by clicking on edit and make it password protected or private so that only people that have access to this URL will be able to see it. And whatever changes you make here, be sure to click on OK. Otherwise, you're not going to stick. Oh yeah, let's come on back here and make this today so I can hit the publish button. Then you've got page attributes and depending upon the theme that you're using will depend on the number of templates that you have to choose from here. And if you'd like to add a featured image, then you have that option right here. And these modules can be moved around too. If in the title area, you get that four arrows, left click, hold and drag your mouse and you can move those around. And then whenever you're finished editing, just go ahead and click on publish. Oh, and you've got the preview option there as well. And then once it's published, you can see that that publish button changes to update in case you come back in later and make any adjustments. Be sure to click on the update button to make those adjustments stick. But you also have the get short link in case you want a shorter URL than the one that's actually generated. If we come over to view page, this is the normal URL, but you can get that short URL if you'd rather. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video on the WordPress page. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a WordPress post. And to do that, we need to log into the dashboard area, which I've already done. And if you've never done this before, then up here in the browser's address bar, you want to put in the URL to your WordPress installation, followed by a forward slash WP-admin, then hit enter, and you'll be presented with a login box that's going to ask you for your username and your password. Enter that stuff, hit the enter key, logging you into the dashboard. Once here, you want to come on over here to the left and hover over posts and you'll get this flyout where you can see the all post page. And that's just a list of all the posts that you've already published or have in draft mode or are scheduled to be published in a future date. You can also see and manage the different categories and tags, which are just additional tools to help keep your post organized. And of course, you can add new posts by clicking on, you guessed it, add new. And you can also get to the new post page by hovering over the word new up here in the admin bar and then clicking on post. Now, the first thing you want to do is enter a title to your post. And then you can go on down here and enter the content. And ideally, the title should be keyword rich. And that'll help you when it comes to search engine optimization. And once you enter the title up here and you click outside of that box, WordPress is going to go ahead and generate the URL or the slug to that post. And if at any time in the future, after you've published this post, you want to change that slug, you can do so by just clicking on edit, make the change, click on OK. And once this has been published, this publish button will change to update. And if you want this change to take, just like any other change you make on here after it's been published, come on over here and click on update. Otherwise, that change will not take place. And in the editor window here is where you would enter the content of that post. And you can do that a couple of ways, either by the visual tab, which is kind of like a WYSIWYG or what you see is what you get editor. Or if you'd like to enter your content kind of longhand, then you can do that under the text tab. And you can see that the formatting options are a little more limited. But under visual tab, you can click on the toolbar toggle button here to get additional formatting options. You can see you're still only limited to just that single row here in the text tab. But these formatting tools may look familiar to you if you've ever worked in a document processing program before like Microsoft Word or OpenOffice, where you can bold text, italicize text, change the text color, and so on. Now, if you wanted to copy and paste content into this editor window from another document that already has the text formatted, like for example, this Word document where I have some text bolded, or italicized or a clickable link and there's a way you can do that 
Let me just copy this into my clipboard here. I'm going to make sure that this formatting tool here that says paste as text does not have a border around it. If it does have a border around it, for example, if I click on that, you'll get this pop out that tells you what's taking place as far as being able to paste formatted content from something like Microsoft Word. Then you want to make sure that that's toggled off because right now it's toggled on with the border around there. And if I paste this in here, none of those formatting options carried through. There, this is not a clickable link. This is not bolded. Now then if we toggle this off just by clicking on that, you can see the border's gone away. And now I'll paste that same content in here again. Now then that formatting did carry over. And we can see this further by going to the text tab here and seeing the source code here where it's got the ahref tag and so on. And if you wanted to add images or videos or audio files to your post, then you can do that by using the add media button right up here and just put the cursor wherever you want that media to be added to, like for example, an image, and then click on add media. And you can select media that's already in the library. You can go to upload files and upload media from your computer by clicking on select files or just drag it and drop it here. Or you can even add it by inserting it from a URL. But if we're going to add one of these images, all you have to do is just click on it and you get the check mark. You can make a few little edits over here to the right and then click on insert into post. And there it is. Now, if we come on up here to the very top right, we've got this option here for screen options. If we hit that drop down, we can see that we've got some modules that can be shown in our editor page by checking or unchecking the boxes. For example, the featured image, that's this module down here at the bottom, tags and categories. If we were to uncheck all of these, then they're not there anymore. Likewise with format, it's gone as well. So all we have now is the published module. But if you want those, make sure those are checked. Likewise with any of these other options here. Like if you wanted to be able to toggle on or off to allow people to make comments on this post, make sure that box titled discussion is checked. Then below the text editor window, you now have the discussion module. And you can also edit the screen layout. By default, you've got two columns. If you wanted just one column, then those items that were over here on the right are now at the bottom below the editor window. And a very cool feature is this box by default is checked that enables full height editor and distraction free functionality. And what that means is the editor window here does not have a fixed height. In other words, no matter how much content you put in here, you're not going to get a scroll bar. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and untick that. And you can see the scroll bar here because it now has a set height. So that's the full height editor. Another element of the distraction free functionality is this button right here, right below the text tab. If we click on that, the two sidebars are going to disappear. And if you want them back temporarily, just move the mouse outside of the editor area. And there they are. And if you want them to go away again while this is toggled on, then just put your cursor anywhere in the editor window, hit enter, and there they go. Let's go ahead and toggle this off. And let's go ahead and close up the screen options. And to the right of the screen options, we have a help tab that is specific to the post editor page. So if you have any questions that are unanswered by this video, then you've got some help waiting for you right here. And while we're over here on the right, you've got the publish module right here where you have different elements that you can either publish it right away. You can schedule the publishing to be at a later date by changing this date, clicking on OK, and that publish button changes to schedule. Let's go ahead and move that back. You can also change the default public visibility by clicking on edit and changing that to private so that only people that have this URL will be able to see this post, or you can make it password protected and a very cool feature. You can make it stick. In other words, on the post page right here, you can make that post stick right at the very top. So all future posts will fall below that one because by default, all new posts are at the top of this post page. But if you use the stick feature, then it's going to stick to the top and whatever changes you make here, just be sure to click on. OK, you also have the preview button where you can see how your post is going to look in the browser before you actually publish it to the world. And if you really just don't like what you've created, you can always move it to the trash bin. And you've got the format module, depending upon the theme that you're using, will depend on which or how many post formats are being shown here. 
and by default standard is the one that's checked in this theme anyway. Then again you've got the categories and tags which as I mentioned earlier will simply help keep this post organized. Then you got the featured image module down here where you can set a featured image for this particular post. And when you're ready go ahead and click on publish and your post is ready to be seen by the world. And you also have this get short link button. If we click on that you can see that you're presented with a much shorter link than the default URL here. And that's it. That's going to bring us to the end of this video on the WordPress post and how to create one. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. A WordPress plugin is a piece of software that adds functionality to your WordPress site. This video is going to show you how to locate, add, and activate plugins for your WordPress site. Now there's actually a couple of different ways you can add plugins to your WordPress site, one being installing from within your WordPress site, the other being installing from an FTP client like FileZilla. And I'll show you that in just a moment. But for the time being, I'm at wordpress.org forward slash plugins. And at the time of this recording, you can see that there's over 40,000 different free plugins available for you here in the WordPress plugin directory. And you can search through these plugins by way of just checking out the featured plugins or by those that are popular based on how others have rated these various plugins. Or if you've got a free account here at WordPress.org, then maybe you've gone through and clicked on the favorites link on various plugins that you've got experience with, well they're going to show up right here once you log in. That can come in pretty handy later on whenever you're wanting to install all these plugins on a brand new WordPress installation. But let's go back to popular for a second and let's just try a Kismet. If we click on this, you'll be presented with the details of that particular plugin where you can click on the download button here and that will download a zipped file to your computer which is what you'll need to do if you're going to be using the FTP method that I'll show you here in just a moment. You've got the description of the plugin, you've got installation information, and the change log that gives you an idea as to what changes have taken place throughout the lifespan of this plugin, download stats, support, reviews, developer information, and so on. Now, if there are several different plugins that you're deciding upon, well, one way that will help you decide which one will work best for you is how many installs has that particular plugin had? When was the last time it was updated? What kind of a rating does it have? So if you've got two plugins that do the same thing, one's been installed over a million times, the other one's been installed 10 times, and that one that's been installed 10 times was last updated a year ago, well, chances are that's going to help you decide which one of those plugins you want to stick with. But this is the WordPress.org site. Let's head on over to our dashboard area of our WordPress site, and I'll show you how you can locate and add plugins from within your WordPress site. Now, I've already logged into my dashboard area, and if you've never done this before, then up here in the address bar, you want to type in the URL of your WordPress installation, followed by a forward slash wp-admin, hit enter, then a box is going to pop up asking you to enter your username and your password. Go ahead and do that. Click on Login. And that'll bring you to the dashboard page. Then over here on the left, you'll see this link for plugins. If you hover over that, you'll get this flyout with three options, at least three options anyway. One of them is going to be editor, which you should stay away from unless you really know what you're doing. The other two, add new, you probably guessed that one right. That's where you go to add new plugins or the installed plugins page. Let's go ahead and click on that. And this is going to show a list of all of the currently installed plugins. Whether they've been activated or not doesn't matter. If they've been installed, they're going to show up right here. And you can also click on the Add New button up here at the top, and that's where you can go to Add New Plugins, as well as the link over here to the left. As you can see, this looks pretty close to the same as it does over here on WordPress.org's plugin page, with the same exact information, only now it's showing up from within your WordPress site. So you can do the search here by Featured, Popular, Recommended, or those favorites. If we click on favorites here, all you have to do to get those favorites of yours to show up here is to enter your username that you registered at WordPress.org with. Click on get favorites. Boom. They're going to populate right there. And you can install them all from right here. But if we come on back here to say featured and we click on the Kismet here, you get this pop-up that gives us the exact same information as we got from WordPress.org. But to install a plugin from here, you simply click on install now. Or if you've downloaded a plugin from WordPress.org, then you can upload that zip file by clicking on this link here. Upload plugin, choose the file, just go to the 
location of that zipped file that you downloaded from wordpress.org and upload it from right here. And that has to be a zip file, just like it says right here. Let's go on back here. But if you're going to install directly from this page, just simply click on Install Now and then Activate Plugin. It's that simple. Now, depending upon the plugin that you just installed and activated, you may get messages up here at the top of the page similar to this one. And you can also see here on the plugins page the differences between these two. One is activated, one is not. The one that's not activated has an activate link. The one that's already activated has a deactivate link. Now, you cannot delete an active plugin. But you can delete this plugin because it's currently not activated. So if you're going to delete a plugin, you have to first deactivate it like that. Now, neither one of these are active. They're both deactive. And you can also use bulk actions here. So if you've got a bunch of plugins that you want to, say, delete, for example, check those, hit bulk actions, then choose your action, like, for example, delete, and then click on apply. So I'm going to go ahead and delete SuperCache from here and then confirm the deletion. And now that I want to download WP SuperCache to my computer and then install it by way of an FTP client. Now, if we're going to use FileZilla, for example, or any FTP client, let me go ahead and move this in here, we have to upload an unzipped folder. So we just simply right-click, and I'm going to use 7-zip, or you can just simply use the Extract All or whatever decompression software that you have built into your computer. I'm going to use 7-zip and just extract right here. I'm going to open that up because what I'm going to upload to my server is the folder that contains the files. Not a folder that contains a folder, but the folder that contains the files. Let me just refresh this, make sure that I'm logged in. Yep. Now, where the heck do I upload it to? Well, I'm going to go to the root directory of your WordPress installation, and you'll know you're there whenever you see the WP-admin folder and the WP-content folder and all this. You want to then open up the WP-content folder, and then you'll see a directory that says plugins. Open that up, and this is where you install your plugin directory or your plugin folders. And over here on the left, I've got that unzipped folder right here. And if I open that up, this is the folder that contains the files. That's the one that I want to upload. And then I just left click, hold, and drag it on over. Now that it's completely uploaded, we're done with FileZilla. Let me go ahead and get out of this. Come on back to our plugins page on our WordPress site. And let's go ahead and refresh this. Now you can see that this plugin has been installed, but it's not activated. Click on Activate, and just like before, it's completely activated and we're ready to go. So that's the two ways in which you can install a WordPress plugin, and two places you can go to search for WordPress plugins, directly from within your WordPress site or from WordPress.org. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video on WordPress plugins. Thanks for watching, and you have a great day. A WordPress theme allows you to change the look of your WordPress site, and not just the color or the layout, but also things like the font style or size and color of the links, and a whole lot more. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to locate, add, activate, and even customize your themes. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can actually locate and add a new WordPress theme. One way is by going directly to wordpress.org slash themes and browse through the different themes that have passed somewhat of a quality control check to be allowed inside of the WordPress theme directory. Now, there's a whole bunch of themes out there that did not pass that quality control check or did not even apply to pass that quality control check. But when it comes to looking for a free WordPress theme, I would stick with only those that are within the WordPress theme directory. Plus, there's a whole bunch of quality commercial themes out there that you can pay good money for, and even some commercial themes here as well. But if you are dead set on just checking out free themes, this is the place to go. And browsing through these free themes, you can do that a few different ways. One is by going through those that are listed here under Featured, or those that are listed under Popular, or Latest. Or if you've got a pretty good idea as to the name of the theme, you can just type in that name here under the search themes box or go to the feature filter and check off some of those items that you want on your theme and then click on apply filters and those that meet these guidelines will be displayed here for you to choose from. Then all you'd have to do, let's come on back here, is just download that theme to your computer. Then once it's downloaded to your computer, then you can install it to your WordPress site by unzipping that folder and uploading it by way of your FTP client, like in this example, FileZilla. 
but where do you upload it to? Well, once you've logged into your server, locate the root directory of the WordPress installation, and in my case, it's public underscore HTML. Just double click to open that up. Then look for the directory that says WP content, double click to open that up. Then look for the directory that says themes, double click to open that up, and then upload that unzipped folder for that theme that you downloaded from WordPress.org into this directory and you've added a new theme to your WordPress site. That, and that's using the FTP client. Let's go ahead and get out of here because we're done with FileZilla. Another way and probably the best way is by doing all of this stuff directly from within your WordPress dashboard. Now I've already logged into my dashboard here. Now if you've never done this before, then up here in the browser's address bar, put in the URL to your WordPress installation followed by a forward slash wp-admin then hit enter on your keyboard and a box is going to pop up asking you for your username and your password. Go ahead and enter those, click on login, and you'll be brought to the WordPress dashboard page. Then from here, come on over to the left and hover over the word appearance and you'll get this flyout. Click on themes and then up here at the top, click on add new. And by the way, this themes page will display all of the current installed themes you have on your site. But to add new, just go ahead and click on the add new button and that zipped up theme folder that you downloaded from wordpress.org, you can just go to upload theme, leave it zipped up, and then go to choose file, navigate to the location of that zipped up file, just like it says right here, and then click on install now. Come on back here to themes. Otherwise, if we go to add new, you can see how this closely resembles that page that was on wordpress.org right here. And you can go through here and you can see some of these have already been installed on my site but you can preview the different themes that are not installed. And if you like the way that it looks, go ahead and click on install, just like I've done with these two. It's really that simple. You don't have to mess around with FTP clients or uploading folders or files. It's all done right here within the add themes page. And as you can see here, you can do the same searching for themes as you could over at wordpress.org by featured, popular, latest, or even feature filter. Let's come on back to our themes page. Now, that's how you can locate and add a theme. Now, once the theme has been installed, you can activate it very simply just by clicking on the activate link. And it deactivates what used to be the active theme and kind of takes its place. And if we come on back to our main page and refresh, you can see how easy that was to change the entire look and feel of our WordPress site just by changing the theme. Now, as far as customizing it, we can do that one of a couple of ways, clicking on the customize button here or over here on the left sidebar. They're both gonna take us to the same place. And these items here that can be customized are theme specific. So depending upon the actual theme that you're customizing will depend on what elements you have over here that you can in fact change. And it's very simple. As you make the changes, for example, site identity, just hit that arrow there on the right. If we wanna change this part of our theme right here, just make the change. And you can see the change take place live as we were typing. And if you want whatever changes you've made here in the customization panel to stick, click on save and publish. If you don't, then just hit the X up here in the top left corner. You'll get the confirmation notice, click on leave this page, and you're done. So again, depending upon the actual theme that you're wanting to customize, will depend on what items you can customize, but at least ways now you know how to get to that point. And whatever elements you want to customize, make sure that you click on the Save and Publish button up here in the top right. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video on WordPress themes. Thanks for watching, and you have a great day. A WordPress widget is a small block area of your WordPress site that does a specific function. This video is going to show you what a widget is and how you can put it to use for your WordPress site. Now, not all WordPress themes support widgets, but most of them do. And for the themes that do support widgets, there are what's called widget-ready areas that you can have your widgets in. Usually, this widget-ready area is in the sidebars, but depending upon the theme, it can also be in the header area, the footer area, and even below the content area. I've even seen it to where it's inside of the content area as well. Now, there's two different areas that you can go to to manage your widgets. And to do that, you need to log into the dashboard area, and I've already done that here. And if you've never logged into the dashboard area or the admin section of your WordPress site, well, to do that, up here in the address bar of your browser, type in the URL to your WordPress installation, followed by a forward slash WP-admin, hit enter, then a box is going to pop up asking you for your 
username and your password. Go ahead and enter those, click on login, and that'll bring you to this page here. Then over here on the left, hover over the word appearance, and in the flyout, you'll have this word that says widgets. Go ahead and click on that link. That'll bring you to the widgets management page. And over here on the right, you'll see the available widget ready areas. And again, this is theme specific. So if you are using a different theme than what I'm showing in this video, then this area might look a little different. But here under the primary sidebar, which is right here, we have these various widgets already active. The content sidebar on this particular theme is over here on the right, which currently is not displayed because, well, there's nothing in there. Likewise with the footer widget. You can see as I open that up, there's nothing in there. And the footer widget, you guessed it, is at the footer or the bottom of our WordPress site. Now to add widgets, you can do that a couple of ways. You can left click, hold and drag that widget over to the widget ready area that you want. Then let go of your mouse and it will open up with the different available settings for that widget. Go ahead and make whatever adjustments you want. Click on save and the widget is now in that particular widget ready area. Let's go on back here and refresh. And there's that calendar, the widget that we just put in the footer widget ready area. Now, if you no longer want this widget in that area, but you want to keep whatever settings that were made, then there's a section over here on the left called inactive widgets. And like it says here, just drag those widgets and drop them right down in here, thusly. And those settings will be maintained. So if sometime in the future you want to add that widget to another area or even back to the same area that it was in, then you won't have to worry about reconfiguring whatever settings there were in there. So that's one way, left click, hold and drag. Another is simply to left click and you'll get this drop down that displays the different widget ready areas. And all you have to do is just left click on that, click on add widget and it's that simple. Then whatever adjustments you do make in here, be sure to click on save, otherwise you're not gonna take. Let's go ahead and get rid of this one because if I no longer want this in that widget ready area, and don't care to save any of the settings, just click on delete, boom, gone. So that's one area in which you can manage the different widgets, adding, removing, and saving. Another area is by coming up here and clicking on manage and customizer. Now you can get to the customizer a couple of different ways by clicking on this button here or over here in the left sidebar, you can click on customize and that will bring you to the customizer within that particular theme or you can go to themes and the active theme will have a button that says customize. Click on that and that'll take you to the same place that that customize link did. And then over here on the left, you'll be presented with the widgets option right down here. Just click on that and it gives you the exact same information that was available to you on the other widgets management page. It just looks a little differently. So if we wanted to add or manage the widgets that are in the primary sidebar, just click on that and here they are and you can left click on it and click on remove just as you could in the other management page or close. You can rearrange them just by left click holding and dragging them around or you can add new widgets by clicking on the add a widget button. You will get this fly out here and let's say you wanted to add a calendar to the primary sidebar. Just left click on it and it automatically adds it to the bottom of that widget ready area and if you want to move that, let's move this out here a little bit you see this is the primary sidebar right here. Let's say you want the calendar to be right up here below the search and above the categories. Right there we go. And you get a live preview of it right here. Now if any of these adjustments look good to you, great. All you have to do is click on save and publish. Come on back here and refresh. And you can see we took that out of the footer, but up here at the top on the primary sidebar, we added that calendar below the search and above the categories. And to get out of here, just click on the X up here and you're brought back to whatever section you were in, be it customizer or themes. And that's it. That's going to bring us to the end of this video on the WordPress widget. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. A WordPress menu or navigation menu is just one way that your site visitor can get around and locate various bits of content on your site. This video is going to show you a couple of different ways to add and edit your WordPress menus. Now to do this, we need to log into the dashboard area of our site, and I've already done that here, but if you've never done that before, it's real simple. Just up here in the address bar of your browser, type in the URL to your WordPress installation, followed by a forward slash wp-admin, then hit enter on your keyboard, and a box is going to pop up asking for your username and your password. Go ahead and enter that, click on login, and you'll be brought to this page here. Then, 
over on the left, hover over the word appearance, and then in this flyout, come on down here and click on menus. And by default, you're not going to have any menus created. First thing we want to do is create our first menu. And you do that by just giving it a name. And you can call it whatever you want. And then click on create menu. And that kind of builds the structure. Now you want to add the menu items. And you can do that, like it says here, from the column on the left. Now by default, you have pages, custom links, and categories. If you want to also add other items like post, for example, come on up here to screen options and hit that drop down and check the box for post. Let's go ahead and close this up. And you can see your posts have been added. Now then, just go ahead and add the items that you want. Let's go ahead and check this box and that box because I want to show you how to do a child page or the parent page. And you also have the option, by the way, to view all or if you've got a whole bunch of items in here, you can do a search. And let's go ahead and add this one here as well. Be sure to click on Add to Menu or nothing's going to happen. There you go. Now, if you want to make this page a child of this page, like it is over here, then just hover over the title bar here and when you get the four arrows, left click hold and just move it to the right a little bit and you can see how it changed the sub item we can do that multiple times you can also move these around as far as reordering them so this way the one up top is going to be the one that's displayed furthest to the center the one at the bottom is going to be displayed furthest to the right and then down below here you can decide the location of this and if you noticed as soon as we created that menu we had this tab created for managed locations, that's kind of the same thing as what's happening down here. Now let's go ahead and add some posts as well. Let's just throw these guys in there. Click on Add to Menu. And you can see how these are named Post. Well, you can do the same thing as you did up here. Rearrange, make this one a child of that one, and so on. Even custom links. And this is the name that will appear on the tab. And then click on Add to Menu. And there it is. Now if we open these up, you can see that we've got some elements in here that we can customize further. But this title attribute here, let me show you where that's at. Come on up here to screen options, and that's the second row right here. So if you wanted to have that particular link when it's clicked to open in a different tab or window, check that box there. If you want to fancy it up with some CSS, check that box there. And you can see these additional items that were added right here. Just check that box, and when this is clicked on, it's going to open up in a new window. Click on Save Menu. Whoop, that's not going to do anything until we decide on where that's going to be. Let me show you how you can do that also right here under Manage Locations. This particular theme, and this is theme specific, but this particular theme only supports two menus. In other words, there's two locations on this theme that will allow a menu. You can create as many menus as you want, but only two of them are going to be displayed at one time. One's along the top and one's along the left sidebar. So for the top menu, we only have the one. Click on Main. Now if we want that on the left sidebar, we can do that as well but I'm going to leave that blank for now. Click on Save Changes, come on back here and refresh, and there we are. Now you are able to customize the titles of these. If we recall, come on back here to Edit Menus. If we wanted to change this to something shorter, right here, Navigation Label. Then just Save Menu, come on back here and refresh. See how that changed? That easy. Now, this is just one way in which you can create, edit, and manage menus. Another way is in the customizer, and you can get there by clicking this link over here under Appearance, or right up here next to Menus, click on Manage and Customizer. That brings us to the customizer and directly to the menu section. And you have all the same items here as you do on the main menus page. They're just arranged a little bit differently. For example, up here on the gear icon, this is where you can adjust the advanced menu properties. Go and close that up. And to add menus, let's go ahead and create one for the sidebar. Click on Add a Menu, give it a name, then click on Create Menu. Now we want to add the items to that menu. Just click on Add Item. Get this fly out here. Let's say a custom link. Don't forget to click on Add to Menu, otherwise it's not going to go over there. Now with these, all you have to do is click on it and it's automatically going to add it. But to make these children post or pages of one another, you have to click on Reorder. Now you get these arrows that pop up here. So this one here is now a child of the one above it. And you see it cannot be reordered up or down because it's a child page of this one. But if we reorder this one up, it's going to take the child with it. Pretty nifty. And before we close this out, we want to make sure that we define the location of this new menu. That's going to be our sidebar. And you can't see it over here. Let's move this out some so you can see this. And that's our menu that was just added. If we untick this, you see this is a live display. 
I'll make that back in there. And then if you like the way things look, come on up here and click on Save and Publish. Then get on out of here. Come on back here and refresh. This is the live page now. And there we are. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video on adding and editing your WordPress menus. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. This video is going to cover some of the basics of optimizing your WordPress post for that all-important free search engine traffic. Now there's a lot of items to deal with in the world of search engine optimization or SEO and what makes this even more confusing is that the importance of some of these items are going to change. A few years ago, for example, all you needed was a whole bunch of targeted keywords in your site's head section and in the content area and boom, you were on the first page of Google. Well, those days are no more, but there are some basic steps that you should be taking to help your SEO rankings. And like with many things in WordPress, there's a plugin that can help us do this. One such plugin is called All-in-One SEO Pack by Michael Torbert. So let's go ahead and install and activate this plugin. And to do this, we need to log into our dashboard area, which I've already done here. And if you've never done this before, it's super simple. Just go on up to the address bar of your browser and enter the URL of your WordPress installation, followed by a forward slash wp-admin, hit enter, and then a box is going to pop up asking you for your username and your password. Go ahead and put those in, click on login, and you'll be brought to this page. And once you're here, come on over here to the left sidebar and hover over the word plugins. And in the flyout, click on add new. Then up here in the search plugins box, type in all in one SEO pack then hit enter. And it should be one of the first ones that pop up. Go ahead and click on install now and then activate plugin. Now, as soon as you activate the plugin, you're going to get this pop out here. And of course, read these over, but for the most part, you can just dismiss these. And as soon as you activate the plugin, most of the default settings that were done at the point of you activating the plugin is really enough. You've really just done a lot more for your search engine optimization than anybody that does not have this type of a plugin installed and activated on their site. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of the settings. Now it does appear up here at the top on your left sidebar. So we're going to go ahead and check out the general settings and you get this other fly out here. You can go ahead and read that and then dismiss it. And I suggest going ahead and signing up for their mailing list but just coming on down the line here, if you want to learn more about each one of these options, you can just click on the word or the question mark over here to the left and you'll get this little drop down to give you more information. And there's also some clickable links in there as well to learn more. But like I said, most all of the default settings are just fine. But I do suggest that you go ahead and enter a title and a brief description for your homepage. And you have certain limitations here as far as the amount of characters you can use for the title or description. The keywords I really wouldn't worry so much about because they're not used as much nowadays as they were in days gone by. And having said that, the keyword settings that appear on each of your post editor pages, I myself just disable this because again, they don't really mean that much anymore. But if you want to go through the trouble of adding keywords, by all means leave this enabled. Otherwise you can disable this. And I'll show you here in a second where this shows up at on the post pages. But if you just scroll on down here, the title settings, again, the default settings are just fine. But if we come on down here to the display settings, I like to leave these as is, but just to point this out, if we were to go into the post or pages page, that being right here, just click on post or pages, where it's going to display all of the different posts or pages that you have, the all-in-one SEO plugin adds these different columns. So if you don't want those columns in there for some odd reason, then you just untick this box and then come on down here to the very bottom and click on update options. And just to show you what that looks like, you see where, where those items have been removed from the post page. But like I said, I like to leave those on. But at least now you know what those do. Likewise with the display menu and admin bar, that's this up here. Sometimes that doesn't work for me, but like I said, I like the default settings. And likewise here to display menu at the top, it's checked. If it's unchecked and you save it, then this is going to appear down at the bottom. But that's the display. The webmaster verification, I do recommend highly that you put this information in here. And again, you can learn more about these by clicking on the question mark or the title over here. Having said that though, if there are other plugins installed and activated on your site that already have this information, do not, I repeat, do not put this information in twice. But if you do not have a plugin, or have this information installed on your WordPress site anywhere else, by all means, add it. It's, it can only help. And to generate some additional love from Google, I would suggest checking this information out as well. 
and by default or the global settings for these I would leave these as they are and I'll show you how you can adjust that on a post by post basis and again any changes you make just come on down here and click on update options and there are some items in the feature manager that you might want to check into as well some of these are taken care of by other plugins that you may already have installed to limit the amount of plugins that you have on your site I would suggest just checking this out and comparing this to other plugins you may have if you don't have any that handle XML sitemaps go ahead and just click on activate here likewise with social media robots txt bad bot blocker and so on but that's the general settings of the all-in-one SEO pack now let's head on over to a new post and go through the creation process of an optimized post of course you want to put in the title here and the content here so with the title and the demonstration post in here and if you scroll on down you can see that all-in-one SEO pack has added this additional module to our post editor page and this gives us an example of how this post will appear in the SERPs, the search engine results page. Speaking of which, let me go ahead and show you an example of a search engine results page. So if somebody were to do a search for garden tools, this is a typical search engine results page for those keywords. Not all the time, but sometimes over here on the right, you'll have some sponsored or some advertisements for that particular keyword, likewise along the top. And then you have the what's called organic search results and this is pretty much what you're looking for you've got the title you've got the url and you've got the description so where does google get these or bing or yahoo well if you come on back to the post by default the search engines grab the title of your post from here the url from here and the description from here so what if the first item in your post is an image well, all the search engines are going to get is maybe some meta information like the size or the dimensions of that image. Or if you have a title attribute to that image, they might pick that up. Well, you're not really going to want that. You want to have more control over what the search engines are going to put in the search engine results page. And that is where all-in-one SEO pack comes into play. The title, you can put whatever you want in here to replace this if you don't want that to be the title on your search engine results page. You've got 60 characters to go right here, for example. And the URL, I should have mentioned this earlier, but if you have not yet adjusted what's called the permalinks, that's the basic structure of your URL. If you've not yet adjusted that from the time that you first installed WordPress, now is a good time to do that. Let's go ahead and come on down to settings and in the flyout, click on permalinks. I'm going to go ahead and open this in a new tab. And depending upon the installation process you went through on your WordPress site, you may have the day and name as your permalink settings, which is not that bad. But if you've got default, which is basically the URL, question mark, a P, which stands for post, equals then the post number, that's not very user friendly or search engine friendly for that matter because a human being or a search engine will look at this and not have any clue what this is referencing by simply looking at this. Of all of these options, my favorite or the one I would suggest that you use is my favorite and that is post name. So if you do make any adjustments here in the permalinks, be sure to click on the adjustment you want to make. Come on down here and click on save changes. Now adjusting the permalinks is best done as soon after you install WordPress as possible. If you adjust the permalinks on a seasoned site, one that has a whole bunch of different posts, you might be taking a chance of breaking some of those links or the URLs within your post. So just knowing that, you might want to have a full backup prior to making this adjustment, just in case that happens. Now there are plugins like 301 redirects that can help fix that problem so you might want to do a little reading up on that if that's the case but again if it's a brand new WordPress site by all means come on in here and adjust your permalinks as soon as possible you can see here the URL or the permalink let's go ahead and refresh this and you can see here it's dropped the date part and now it just has the domain name and the title just like it is up here but now again if you wanted to have a different title be sure to type it in here again 60 characters max and again as far as the description you've got 160 characters make good use of it that gives you an idea anyway and i would go as much into the 160 characters as possible and as i had mentioned earlier keywords here in the meta information 
is not that important anymore, but keywords in the actual content and the title is very important. So make sure that whatever somebody types in here in order to get to your post or your content, that you have those keywords ideally in both the title and at least a couple of spots throughout the content of your post. And if you do have images, which I highly suggest that you do, then you might want to go ahead and add the keywords into the title of your images as well. Even the alternate text, that's a good place to put some keywords also. But the keywords down here, not so important. And the no index and no follow boxes down here at the bottom, the only time I would check these boxes is if you do not want this content to be seen by the general public. In other words, you do not want the search engines to index this content Tell them not to by checking these boxes. Otherwise, leave them unchecked. Come on up here, click on update, and your post is now search engine friendly. Well, that's going to bring us to the end of this video on optimizing your post for search engine traffic. Thanks for watching, and you have a great day. This video is going to cover some of the basics of optimizing your WordPress post for that all-important free search engine traffic. Now, there's a lot of items to deal with in the world of search engine optimization, or SEO, and what makes this even more confusing is that the importance of some of these items are going to change. A few years ago, for example, all you needed was a whole bunch of targeted keywords in your site's head section and in the content area, and boom, you were on the first page of Google. Well, those days are no more, but there are some basic steps that you should be taking to help your SEO rankings. And like with many things in WordPress, there's a plugin that can help us do this. One such plugin is called All-in-One SEO Pack by Michael Torbert. So let's go ahead and install and activate this plugin. And to do this, we need to log into our dashboard area, which I've already done here. And if you've never done this before, it's super simple. Just go on up to the address bar of your browser and enter the URL of your WordPress installation, followed by a forward slash WP-admin, hit enter, and then a box is going to pop up asking you for your username and your password. Go ahead and put those in, click on login, and you'll be brought to this page. And once you're here, come on over here to the left sidebar and hover over the word plugins. And in the flyout, click on add new. Then up here in the search plugins box, type in all in one SEO pack, then hit enter. And it should be one of the first ones that pop up. Go ahead and click on install now, and then activate plugin. Now, as soon as you activate the plugin, you're going to get this pop out here. And of course, read these over, but for the most part, you can just dismiss these. And as soon as you activate the plugin, most of the default settings that were done at the point of you activating the plugin is really enough. You've really just done a lot more for your search engine optimization than anybody that does not have this type of a plugin installed and activated on their site. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of the settings. Now, it does appear up here at the top on your left sidebar. So we're going to go ahead and check out the general settings. And you get this other fly out here. You can go ahead and read that and then dismiss it. And I suggest going ahead and signing up for their mailing list. But just coming on down the line here, if you want to learn more about each one of these options, you can just click on the word or the question mark over here to the left, and you'll get this little drop down to give you more information. And there's also some clickable links in there as well to learn more. But like I said, most all of the default settings are just fine. But I do suggest that you go ahead and enter a title and a brief description for your homepage. And you have certain limitations here as far as the amount of characters you can use for the title or description. The keywords I really wouldn't worry so much about because they're not used as much nowadays as they were in days gone by. And having said that, the keyword settings that appear on each of your post editor pages, I myself just disable this because, again, they don't really mean that much anymore. But if you want to go through the trouble of adding keywords, by all means, leave this enabled. Otherwise, you can disable this. And I'll show you here in a second where this shows up at on the post pages. But if you just scroll on down here, the title settings, again, the default settings are just fine. But if we come on down here to the display settings, I like to leave these as is, but just to point this out, if we were to go into the post or pages page, that being right here, just click on post or pages, where it's going to display all of the different posts or pages that you have, the all-in-one SEO plugin adds these different columns. So if you don't want those columns in there for some odd reason, then you just untick this box and then come on down here to the very bottom and click on Update Options. And just to show you what that looks like, you see where, where those items have been removed from the post page. But like I said, I like to leave those on. But at least now you know what those do. Likewise, with the Display Menu and Admin Bar, 
that's this up here sometimes that doesn't work for me but like I said I like the default settings and likewise here to display menu at the top it's checked if it's unchecked and you save it then this is going to appear down at the bottom but that's the display the webmaster verification I do recommend highly that you put this information in here and again you can learn more about these by clicking on the question mark or the title over here having said that though if there are other plugins installed and activated on your site that already have this information do not I repeat do not put this information in twice but if you do not have a plugin or have this information installed on your WordPress site anywhere else by all means add it it's it can only help and to generate some additional love from Google I would suggest checking this information out as well and by default or the global settings for these I would leave these as they are and I'll show you how you can adjust that on a post by post basis and again any changes you make just come on down here and click on update options and there are some items in the feature manager that you might want to check into as well some of these are taken care of by other plugins that you may already have installed to limit the amount of plugins that you have on your site I would suggest just checking this out and comparing this to other plugins you may have if you don't have any that handle XML sitemaps go ahead and just click on activate here likewise with social media robots txt bad bot blocker and so on but that's the general settings of the all-in-one SEO pack now let's head on over to a new post and go through the creation process of an optimized post of course you want to put in the title here and the content here so with the title and the demonstration post in here and if you scroll on down you can see that all-in-one SEO pack has added this additional module to our post editor page and this gives us an example of how this post will appear in the SERPs the search engine results page speaking of which let me go ahead and show you an example of a search engine results page so if somebody were to do a search for garden tools this is a typical search engine results page for those keywords not all the time but sometimes over here on the right you'll have some sponsored or some advertisements for that particular keyword likewise along the top and then you have the what's called organic search results and this is pretty much what you're looking for you've got the title you've got the URL and you've got the description so where does Google get these or Bing or Yahoo well they come on back to the post by default the search engines grab the title of your post from here the URL from here and the description from here so what if the first item in your post is an image well all the search engines are going to get is maybe some meta information like the size or the dimensions of that image or if you have a title attribute to that image they might pick that up well you're not really going to want that you want to have more control over what the search engines are going to put in the search engine results page and that is where all-in-one SEO pack comes into play the title you can put whatever you want in here to replace this if you don't want that to be the title on your search engine results page you've got 60 characters to go right here for example and the URL I should have mentioned this earlier but if you have not yet adjusted what's called the permalinks that's the basic structure of your URL if you've not yet adjusted that from the time that you first installed WordPress now is a good time to do that let's go ahead and come on down to settings and in the flyout click on permalinks I'm gonna go ahead and open this in a new tab and depending upon the installation process you went through on your WordPress site you may have the day and name as your permalink settings which is not that bad but if you've got default which is basically the URL question mark a P which stands for post equals then the post number that's not very user friendly or search engine friendly for that matter because a human being or a search engine will look at this and not have any clue what this is referencing by simply looking at this of all of these options my favorite or the one I would suggest that you use is my favorite and that is post name so if you do make any adjustments here in the permalinks be sure to click on the adjustment you want to make come on down here and click on save changes now adjusting the permalinks is best done as soon after you install WordPress as possible if you adjust the permalinks on a seasoned site one that has a whole bunch of different posts you might be taking a chance of breaking some of those links or the URLs within your post so just knowing that you might want to have a full backup prior to making this adjustment just in case that happens 
Now there are plugins like 301 redirects that can help fix that problem. So you might want to do a little reading up on that if that's the case. But again, if it's a brand new WordPress site, by all means, come on in here and adjust your permalinks as soon as possible. You can see here the URL or the permalink. Let's go ahead and refresh this. And you can see here it's dropped the date part. And now it just has the domain name and the title, just like it is up here. But now again, if you wanted to have a different title, be sure to type it in here. Again, 60 characters max. And again, as far as the description, you've got 160 characters. Make good use of it. That gives you an idea anyway. And I would go as much into the 160 characters as possible. And as I had mentioned earlier, keywords here in the meta information is not that important anymore. But keywords in the actual content and the title is very important. So make sure that whatever somebody types in here in order to get to your post or your content that you have those keywords ideally in both the title and at least a couple of spots throughout the content of your post. And if you do have images, which I highly suggest that you do, then you might want to go ahead and add the keywords into the title of your images as well. Even the alternate text, that's a good place to put some keywords also. But the keywords down here, not so important. And the no index and no follow boxes down here at the bottom, the only time I would check these boxes is if you do not want this content to be seen by the general public. In other words, you do not want the search engines to index this content. Tell them not to by checking these boxes. Otherwise, leave them unchecked. Come on up here, click on update, and your post is now search engine friendly. Well, that's going to bring us to the end of this video on optimizing your post for search engine traffic. Thanks for watching, and you have a great day. This video is going to cover some of the basics of optimizing your WordPress post for that all-important free search engine traffic. Now, there's a lot of items to deal with in the world of search engine optimization, or SEO, and what makes this even more confusing is that the importance of some of these items are going to change. A few years ago, for example, all you needed was a whole bunch of targeted keywords in your site's head section and in the content area, and boom, you were on the first page of Google. Well, those days are no more, but there are some basic steps that you should be taking to help your SEO rankings. And like with many things in WordPress, there's a plugin that can help us do this. One such plugin is called All-in-One SEO Pack by Michael Torbert. So let's go ahead and install and activate this plugin. And to do this, we need to log into our dashboard area, which I've already done here. And if you've never done this before, it's super simple. Just go on up to the address bar of your browser and enter the URL of your WordPress installation followed by a forward slash wp-admin, hit enter, and then a box is going to pop up asking you for your username and your password. Go ahead and put those in, click on login, and you'll be brought to this page. And once you're here, come on over here to the left sidebar and hover over the word plugins, and in the flyout, click on add new. Then up here in the search plugins box, type in all-in-one SEO pack, then hit enter. And it should be one of the first ones that pop up. Go ahead and click on install now and then activate plugin. Now, as soon as you activate the plugin, you're going to get this pop out here. And of course, read these over, but for the most part, you can just dismiss these. And as soon as you activate the plugin, most of the default settings that were done at the point of you activating the plugin is really enough. You've really just done a lot more for your search engine optimization than anybody that does not have this type of a plugin installed and activated on their site. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of the settings. Now, it does appear up here at the top on your left sidebar. So we're gonna go ahead and check out the general settings and you get this other fly out here. You can go ahead and read that and then dismiss it. And I suggest going ahead and signing up for their mailing list, but just coming on down the line here, if you wanna learn more about each one of these options, you can just click on the word or the question mark over here to the left and you'll get this little drop down to give you more information. And there's also some clickable links in there as well to learn more. But like I said, most all the default settings are just fine. But I do suggest that you go ahead and enter a title and a brief description for your homepage. And you have certain limitations here as far as the amount of characters you can use for the title or description. The keywords I really wouldn't worry so much about because they're not used as much nowadays as they were in days gone by. And having said that, the keyword settings that appear on each of your post editor pages, I myself just disable this because, again, they don't really mean that much anymore. 
but if you want to go through the trouble of adding keywords, by all means, leave this enabled. Otherwise, you can disable this. And I'll show you here in a second where this shows up at on the post pages. But if you just scroll on down here, the title settings, again, the default settings are just fine. But if we come on down here to the display settings, I like to leave these as is, but just to point this out, if we were to go into the post or pages page, that being right here, just click on post or pages where it's going to display all of the different posts or pages that you have. The all-in-one SEO plugin adds these different columns. So if you don't want those columns in there for some odd reason, then you just untick this box and then come on down here to the very bottom and click on update options. And just to show you what that looks like, you see where, where those items have been removed from the post page. But like I said, I like to leave those on. But at least now you know what those do. Likewise with the display menu and admin bar, that's this up here. Sometimes that doesn't work for me, but like I said, I like the default settings. And likewise here to display menu at the top, it's checked. If it's unchecked and you save it, then this is going to appear down at the bottom. But that's the display. The webmaster verification, I do recommend highly that you put this information in here. And again, you can learn more about these by clicking on the question mark or the title over here. Having said that though, if there are other plugins installed and activated on your site that already have this information, do not, I repeat, do not put this information in twice. But if you do not have a plugin or have this information installed on your WordPress site anywhere else, by all means add it. It's, it can only help. And to generate some additional love from Google, I would suggest checking this information out as well. And by default or the global settings for these, I would leave these as they are. And I'll show you how you can adjust that on a post by post basis. And again, any changes you make, just come on down here and click on update options. And there are some items in the feature manager that you might want to check into as well. Some of these are taken care of by other plugins that you may already have installed. To limit the amount of plugins that you have on your site, I would suggest just checking this out and comparing this to other plugins you may have. If you don't have any that handle XML sitemaps, go ahead and just click on activate here. Likewise with social media, robots, TXT, bad bot blocker, and so on. But that's the general settings of the all-in-one SEO pack. Now let's head on over to a new post and go through the creation process of an optimized post. Of course, you want to put in the title here and the content here. So with the title and the demonstration post in here, and if you scroll on down, you can see that all-in-one SEO pack has added this additional module to our post editor page. And this gives us an example of how this post will appear in the SERPs, the search engine results page. Speaking of which, let me go ahead and show you an example of a search engine results page. So if somebody were to do a search for garden tools, this is a typical search engine results page for those keywords. Not all the time, but sometimes over here on the right, you'll have some sponsored or some advertisements for that particular keyword, likewise along the top. And then you have the what's called organic search results. And this is pretty much what you're looking for. You've got the title, you've got the URL, and you've got the description. So where does Google get these? Or Bing or Yahoo? Well, they come on back to the post. By default, the search engines grab the title of your post from here, the URL from here, and the description from here. So what if the first item in your post is an image? Well, all the search engines are going to get is maybe some meta information like the size or the dimensions of that image. Or if you have a title attribute to that image, they might pick that up. Well, you're not really going to want that. You want to have more control over what the search engines are going to put in the search engine results page. And that is where all-in-one SEO pack comes into play. The title, you can put whatever you want in here to replace this if you don't want that to be the title on your search engine results page. You've got 60 characters to go right here. For example, and the URL, I should have mentioned this earlier, but if you have not yet adjusted what's called the permalinks, that's the basic structure of your URL. If you've not yet adjusted that from the time that you first installed WordPress, now is a good time to do that. Let's go ahead and come on down to settings and in the flyout, click on permalinks. I'm going to go ahead and open this in a new tab. And depending upon the installation process you went through on your WordPress site, you may have the day and name as your permalink settings, which is not that bad. But if you've got default, which is basically the URL, 
question mark, a P, which stands for post, equals then the post number. That's not very user friendly or search engine friendly for that matter because a human being or a search engine will look at this and not have any clue what this is referencing by simply looking at this. Of all of these options, my favorite or the one I would suggest that you use is my favorite and that is post name. So if you do make any adjustments here in the permalinks, be sure to click on the adjustment you want to make. Come on down here and click on save changes. Now adjusting the permalinks is best done as soon after you install WordPress as possible. If you adjust the permalinks on a seasoned site, one that has a whole bunch of different posts, you might be taking a chance of breaking some of those links or the URLs within your post. So just knowing that, you might want to have a full backup prior to making this adjustment, just in case that happens. Now there are plugins like 301 redirects that can help fix that problem. So you might want to do a little reading up on that if that's the case. But again, if it's a brand new WordPress site, by all means, come on in here and adjust your permalinks as soon as possible. You can see here the URL or the permalink. Let's go ahead and refresh this. And you can see here it's dropped the date part. And now it just has the domain name and the title, just like it is up here. But now again, if you wanted to have a different title, be sure to type it in here. Again, 60 characters max. And again, as far as the description, you've got 160 characters. Make good use of it. That gives you an idea anyway. And I would go as much into the 160 characters as possible. And as I had mentioned earlier, keywords here in the meta information is not that important anymore, but keywords in the actual content and the title is very important. So make sure that whatever somebody types in here in order to get to your post or your content, that you have those keywords ideally in both the title and at least a couple of spots throughout the content of your post. And if you do have images, which I highly suggest that you do, then you might want to go ahead and add the keywords into the title of your images as well. Even the alternate text, that's a good place to put some keywords also. But the keywords down here, not so important. And the no index and no follow boxes down here at the bottom, the only time I would check these boxes is if you do not want this content to be seen by the general public. In other words, you do not want the search engines to index this content. Tell them not to by checking these boxes. Otherwise, leave them unchecked. Come on up here, click on update, and your post is now search engine friendly. Well, that's going to bring us to the end of this video on optimizing your post for search engine traffic. Thanks for watching, and you have a great day. This video is going to show you a couple of different ways to prevent a server crashing brute force attack. Now, a brute force attack is when someone, usually a bot of some kind, continues to attack your login page by repeatedly trying to guess your username and password until it's successful and breaks into your site. Now, a couple of simple things you can do to help prevent the break-in is to never use easily guessed usernames like admin or test and to always use strong, unguessable passwords that contain a minimum of 8 to 12 characters. Of course, the more characters, the better. This is going to help against the actual break-in, but not the damage caused by the resources being consumed on your WordPress site server, fighting off all those repeated attempts by the bot to guess your login credentials. Now, this can be helped by a plugin that limits the number of tries by a particular IP address, and then that IP address is blocked for a specified time frame. A great plugin for this is called Limit Login Attempts. The problem lately, though, has been that certain bots and their brute force attacks are coming from tens of thousands of different IP addresses, which will shut down a server very quickly, even if you have an IP address limiting plugin installed. The plugin will prevent the break-in, but will not prevent the massive attack and the eventual meltdown of your server. Now, most hackers, when trying to use the brute force attack to break into your site, will do so through the wp-login.php file. Now, there are lots of quality plugins that will change your wp-login.php file to something else. So instead of the login URL being mydomainname.com slash wp-login.php, which the hackers are targeting, these plugins will make it something like mydomain.com slash login or mydomain.com slash oh no you don't or any other custom name to that particular file. Now this fix will stop the brute force attackers dead in their tracks, but 
Usually these plugins also have a ton of other settings that require very careful adjustments or your site's going to break. So basically all we need is a plugin that's going to change our login URL, not use a ton of our server's bandwidth, and is super simple to configure. Now before I introduce you to the plugin that I came across, I want to mention that if you are the only person ever to log into your admin area, like maybe it's not a membership site that you're running, then really you don't need to change your login URL, you just need to make your login page invisible to anybody except for you. And we can do that through a file on your root directory called the .htaccess file. And to do that, we're going to log into our cPanel control panel, come on down here to File Manager, and edit our .htaccess file. Now, if you're not seeing the .htaccess file in your root directory, probably because it's hidden. So to unhide this, come on back to our control panel here and click on the link for Legacy File Manager, and you're going to get this box that pops up. As a matter of fact, if you have just recently started with this particular hosting service and you've only logged into cPanel once or twice, you may still be getting this box popping up every time you do that until you check this box here to skip this question. So all you have to do at this point is just check this box here that says Show Hidden Files, click on Go, and those hidden files will be hidden no more. Now at this point, go ahead and select the .htaccess file, click on Code Edit or Edit, either way. Code Edit has numbers along the side here, Edit doesn't. But up here at the very top of the page, get you a couple of blank spaces up there and paste the following code. And I'm going to include this code as a copy and paste document along with this video so you don't have to worry about trying to copy all these details here. But that's it. All you have to do now is simply replace these hashtags or pound sign, whatever you want to call them, with your actual IP address. Now, where do you get your IP address? In case you don't know, what you can do is just go to your address bar of your browser, type in whatismyip.com, no spaces, and then it's going to display your IP address somewhere up in this area here. Copy that, paste it in place of these hashtags, save, and what this will do is it will basically hide your wp-login.php file from anybody, or everybody, except for anybody that has this IP address, which is basically you. Keep in mind, though, that if you have a what's called dynamic IP address, in other words, one that changes regularly, then whenever you log into your WordPress site, you're going to get a forbidden page. Don't sweat it. Just find out what your IP address is again. Come on back in here. Put your new IP address in here, and you're good. And that also holds true with if you log in to your WordPress site from various locations. Try to find the IP addresses of all those locations and put those in here. So that's one way to do this. And don't forget to click on save too. But if you don't want to go that route, and you definitely don't want to go that route if you've got a membership site, in that case, you're going to go with the plugin version. And that's what I'm going to show you now. Now, while there might be others out there, this is the one that I'm going to go with. WPS Hide Login. Does exactly what we're looking for and nothing else. Super lightweight super easy to configure so let's install and activate this let's head on back to our wordpress site log into our dashboard area and this could be the very last time you log into your dashboard area this way but if you've never done this before super simple come on up here to the address bar of your browser type in the url to your wordpress installation followed by a forward slash wp-admin hit enter a box is going to pop up asking you for your login credentials Go ahead and enter your username and your password, click on Login, and you'll be brought to this page here. Then come on over to Plugins, click on Add New in the Flyout, then up here in the Search Plugins box, type in WPS Hide Login, hit Enter, and then look for the one that says WPS Hide Login and click on Install. Now I've already done that, that's why mine says Installed, otherwise yours will say Install Now. Then come on down here to where it's going to be installed, oh yeah. And then, of course, after you click on Install Now, you'll want to activate it. But once it's activated, come on down here to Settings, either on the Plugin page, or you can come over here to Settings on the left and click on General. It's going to take you to the same spot. Just come on down to the bottom of the page, and this is it. This is all there is to it. Now, by default, they put the word Login in the box here. That'll work just fine, but you can change this to anything that you want. Just make sure that you click on Save Changes after you've done that. So now then, instead of our domain name slash wp-login.php, we have to use our domain name slash whatever word we put in there to be able to gain access to our login page. 
So let's go ahead and log out of here and give it a try. You see it's already replaced that wp-login.php with our new word. But let's try it with the old way. And you can go with wp-admin, which some folks do. You're going to get a page not found. Or wp-login.php, also page not found. So those bots that are coming to your site looking to brute force their way in, they're going to get this each and every time and go on about their business to some other site that's not as protected as yours. Now, if you want to learn more about brute force attacks, come on over to codex.wordpress.org slash brute force attacks. Don't forget the capitalization, the underscore, and the S at the end. And that's going to bring you to this page here at wordpress.org that you can learn a lot more about brute force attacks. Well, that's going to bring us to the end of this video on securing your WordPress site against brute force attacks. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. In this video, we're going to go over what WordPress is. WordPress is a powerful free content management system, otherwise known as CMS, that allows you to create business websites, blogs, e-commerce web shops, and much, much more. WordPress was created in 2003 as a blogging tool, but has since grown to be a full-featured, powerful website creation tool used by millions of individuals, organizations, and businesses around the world. Some users of WordPress include Google, Coca-Cola, Sony, The New York Times, Harvard, and many others. WordPress is an open source project, meaning that there's a large, thriving community of people working on its continued development. And as with all open source projects, the full-featured, powerful software is completely free. Along with the core tools, there are thousands of plugins, both free and premium, that greatly extend the functionality of WordPress, so you can accomplish even more with your website. The powerful templating system means there are thousands of quality templates, also known as themes, both free and premium, that you can use to change the design and general look of your website. You can also develop custom themes, plugins, content types, and much more. And with the self-hosted option, you can create a wide range of extremely functional websites for just about any industry or need. And because of WordPress's solid foundation and adherence to web standards, it does a great job of search engine optimization, otherwise known as SEO, right out of the box. Which just basically means it helps with your search rankings, which helps your audience find you. Along with the head start the system gives you, there are tons of high quality free plugins that can further help with your search rankings. WordPress offers businesses, individuals, and organizations a great way to create professional websites, easily control content, perform well in search engines, and engage with their audiences. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video on a quick look at what WordPress is. Thanks for watching, and you have a great day. In this video, we're going to talk about the difference between WordPress.org and WordPress.com. Now, WordPress is a powerful publishing tool that makes it easy for anyone to publish their content online. WordPress comes in two different versions, WordPress.org and WordPress.com. Now, while a lot of the key elements are the same, there are some very important differences. For example, WordPress.org is a self-hosted solution, meaning the full-featured, powerful software is completely free. You are, however, responsible for getting a domain name, a web host, which is basically a company that actually hosts the files for your website, otherwise known as your server, and you're also responsible for installing the software. Now, most hosts offer an easy to use what's called a one-click install option for WordPress because it's a pretty popular tool. While you are responsible for hosting and maintaining the site when using the self-hosted option, you are 100% in control of your website and the content on your website. You can use custom themes, plugins, analytics, and best of all, monetize your content and generally customize the site as much as you'd like. Now, WordPress.com, however, is a commercial service targeted mainly towards bloggers. Using the WordPress system, you can create a free blog which includes managed hosting and a yoursite.wordpress.com domain name. Now there are several limits though. You will not be able to upload custom themes or plugins. You will not have direct access to the files on the WordPress.com server and advertisements are going to be displayed on your blog. You can, however, upgrade your account and pay additional yearly fees for a custom domain name, additional hosting space, or removing those advertisements. 
Now, choosing which option is best for you just depends on what your goals are for your website. If you will be focusing mainly on blogging and don't want to handle or hire someone to handle the setup and maintenance, then WordPress.com is likely to be your best bet. If, however, you're a business owner of any size, you would generally be best served with WordPress.org, the self-hosted option, as you will have a lot more control and flexibility for your website. That's going to bring us to the end of this video on the difference between WordPress.org and wordpress.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. Please like and share this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel.